What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily, and it's Monday morning, and we're gonna go into the snake room and check out a couple of cool things that I produced and that I purchased over the last year, see how they're growing up, see how they're doing, see what colors have developed, if any pattern has changed, and maybe some of them will even become available to you guys out there. And so stay tuned, pay attention, write down those names, contact me if you want them. I might not be selling them, but it's cool to look at anyway. So this is gonna be a manic Monday here uh, on Christmas week. I hope you guys have got all your Christmas shopping done. And if you haven't, hey, hit me up. You never know, I might have a great gift. I actually am sending out a snake. I'm gonna show you in a little bit to a really special young lady who has uh, started her breeding, uh, I guess you could say, business very, very young, my friend of Maya T's. And I know she's gonna watch this video and she's gonna be very happy with her snake. She gets a little, uh, I guess you should say tomorrow morning. All right, let's get to it. All right, we have this beautiful, beautiful Kahl albino, 50% head leopard, but it's definitely head leopard. I can see, you can see the head leopard influenced the bow tie saddles and this, this side you know, striping. And this beautiful male is going to a beautiful girl, Amaya Tees, who's a very young reptile collector and breeder now. And uh, she is, I like to see him getting in young and she's bought some really nice snakes. She's got the, probably the best collection of any young girl I know. <laughs> and uh, her father, Joe, is very supportive and I've become friends with them. And so, this, this little boy is going to be heading over to them very shortly. We're going to be packing him up. He's getting a little, uh, he's feeling his oats here. He's not going to be able to do this where they're going because they're in Pennsylvania and it's freezing cold there, probably with snow. But in Florida, he can crawl through the grass and so is wild oats, so to speak. Beauty. Hate to see him go. Check out this cool snake that I produced and she is growing well. This is a spider and she hurricane, yellow belly, orange dream, leopard. It's 100% head pied, 50% head hypo and albino. And I, I, I'm pretty sure they're all in there. You know, I'm pretty sure all those genes are in there. You can see the hurricane lining up here. Obviously the leopard. Um, pretty sure it's spider too, a lot of reduced pattern here. Yellow belly. Very orangey, I, I would bet it's orange dream too. Obviously this, this female will probably be a holdback because she's got so many chains in her, specifically the hurricane uh, stuff that I, you know, I love. And obviously she's hep hide, so. And 50% head hypo too, as well as albino. So I'll probably breed her maybe to a hypo pied or something like that and see what we produce like a visual hypopied or something. I think that might be cool. Look at this, look at this. This is just wacky, really nice looking snake. It was a two egg clutch too. And I think I hit almost every gene. Once again, I know it's freezing up there north where you guys are, but I'm in the nice warm south here, South Florida. So I get to enjoy and so the snake's the outdoor. Here it is. You know, we talk about miracle litters and sometimes, you know, I've had boa litters and this was one of them where there was two snakes that made it out. Bunch of stillborns, just it wasn't, it wasn't a big litter. This female never throws a lot of uh, babies. And this one was, re actually it was the th three snake. One actually died, but this one was really tiny, didn't eat nothing. I, and she was really beautiful, obviously. This is a sun glow, sharp sun glow, which is a hypo sharp albino. It's 100% head blood. Look at, the, look at the purples in that tail. Wow. And really, really nice looking female. Probably be a holdback. I was originally gonna sell her and then I'm like, as she's gotten older and she's grown and as she eats really well and She's starting to put size on. She's getting a lot of purples there. And I just really like her. She's really cool looking. And here's her brother, which is a fire opal, which is a hypo sharp albino blood. So this is a visual. This is the 
at double visual and he's gonna shed, but he's gorgeous. The Sharp, actually both the Sharp and the Colobino Bloods are amazing looking snakes. You throw that Hypo gene in there and you got even more gorgeousness going on. And you know, I, I was you know originally tempted to sell them because I, I have a visual male already. And then I'm like, you know what? When it comes to boas, you're, it's really hard to breed w more than one female with the same male because you never know when they're ovulating and when they're gonna, you know, when, when the right time to keep them in it. So it's easier just to have one per one. So as far as redundancy goes, I'm probably gonna hold this guy back. I am gonna hold this guy back. So I have two fire opals to use in my breeding projects. But this goes to show you, sometimes, you know, you, you know, I hit really good odds. You know, it was a hypo blood hit sharp bred to a sharp head blood so the odds were not phenomenal at hitting you know this snake and yet we got one and this one was pretty close so i just babied them fed them very small i mean hot like literally like fuzzy mice for months and months and months and this one had to be assist fed originally uh, because she was so tiny and then you know assist feeding little snakes is really scary because you can you can really hurt them or if you don't do it right and if you if you use prey that are too big so i had a really baby so these guys have like a special place in my heart look at look at the look at the purples in that tail look at that i don't know where all these purples are coming in this in this female but she's got a lot of purple in her head too and throughout her body look at those purples that's pretty wacky right so how can i let that thing go can't gotta, gotta keep it that's a lot of purple right there. Right her body. And obviously this, this male is just gorgeous because he's the visual blood. She's head only head blood and she's got some insanity going on there. I don't even know what this all is. So once again, the snakes are a growing. Just keep feeding them, keep in the rack and uh, a couple of years, we'll have some fun stuff to play with. One of the morphs that was on my bucket list that I really wanted to get into and I, and I bought into, I got two, two of them this year, is the Inca. Look at the patterning on that Inca. This, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. This is a Hypo Inca. It's het for blood, 100%. Female. She was teeny when I got her, and she's putting on some nice size now. And I can't wait to be able to breed this female. She's just really, really, the Inca is, is super cool. Now, the, the Super Inca supposedly is, is not really a viable snake, so you don't want to create Super Incas. They don't do well, but the single copy Inca is, is gorgeous. I mean, it has so much darkness and, and contrast in it and pattern. You know, with blood, it's going to be great. It's going to be, blood Inca is, is off the charts, and I wouldn't even mind getting some Onyx into this, too, because Onyx is dark as well. So this female should be do really, really well. But you know, it's gonna take a while to grow her up. I mean, it's gonna take a couple of years. She's a 20, so I'm looking at three years minimum, you know, before she breeds. So I gotta just kind of enjoy her for now for what she is and grow her up. I have a male that I'm actually trying to, I'm actually breeding this year. I don't know if he'll go or not. And we'll see what we produce with him. But she's really nice. Here's my pure diamond python that I got from Tom Crutchfield, this female. I bought, I got a really nice Stardust one from him last year. This is pure 100% diamond python. Tom is one of the people who imported them back in the day. And this is his original, one of his original pairs that produced this, this gorgeous female. And I'm waiting for a male next year from him, hopefully, because I really, I love diamond pythons and I want to get into to breeding the diamond pythons, but I wanted purebred only. I didn't want anything mixed in with it to cloud the water, so to speak. And this little girl, they, they're very arboreal, you know, when they're babies, they love to climb. And she's she's special, look at this little girl. When I first got her, you know, she wasn't eating. And I, and I said, Tom, you know, what, what should I do to feed her? He's like, you gotta give her stuff that moves. You know, cause I was giving her, she was so tiny. I was giving her like little pinkies and you know, crawlers. He's like, nah, nah, give her some like very, very small, you know, hoppers or something like that. I said, this, there's no way the snake is going to eat a hopper. He's like, trust me. And I gave her also a, a, like a perch, not really a perch, but I gave her a hide box that she could sit on top of. And sure enough, these things like to hunt. 
and she started eating and now she's eating. You know, the trick with them is not really to feed them that much anyway. You wait kind of, from what Tom tells me, what I've been doing is with the diamonds is wait till they poop, kind of almost like with the green tree pythons. Once they poop, you can feed them again. Usually that takes two to three weeks. So every two weeks or so, I'm giving her uh, some small prey. And then as she gets a little bigger, I'll slow that down even more to every three weeks probably. Diamonds don't have to be big to breed. It's really an age thing with them. So getting them up to size like you would with a ball python is not, the strategy is not the same. And they're just a really, really nice snake. I love it. I love watching her crawl in the tree. Once again, I'm lucky I'm in Florida here. I can, Tom told me, Tom's trying to convince me to keep her outside, but I don't want to do that. I'm too scared. You know, it does get cold. I know they can take the cold here, but I worry about animal, wild animals. And, you know, even though I'll have, a, I'll have a nice outdoor enclosure, Tom said he'd help me set up and everything. I don't know, maybe I'll do it down the road, I'll see. These things can take a pretty cold temperature, so there's really not that much risk, like with a normal snake, where if it got a little too cold or or like a lizard. So I might do it, you never know. I, I gotta think about it. It would be really cool though to have diamond python living outside, or maybe a pair of them, or a trio. <laughs> I'll think about it. Look how beautiful the snake is. In, in, the, in its natural setting. Here's my super orange dream, but I believe those will be high intensity. So high intensity, super orange dream, Enchi Freeway or Mardi Gras, if you, know, if you want to combine the Enchi with the Yellow Belly Asphalt. Well, together, those three genes will be called a Mardi Gras. If not, if you just want to call it Yellow Belly and Asphalt, you call it a, a freeway. This is super orange dream though. Once again, with the, I feet, believe the high intensity gene is in here as well, um, because I produced these before. And this is a gorgeous female. And you know what? I'm gonna make her available even though I shouldn't, because I can't keep everything. <laughs> Look at that head. Look at how gorgeous that head is. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous animal. If someone wants to pick this up, you can contact me. Once again, super orange dream, Anchi Freeway. that has that high intensity in it as well. Look at, look at, look at all this stuff going on here. Just amazing and really white belly from that super orange dream. Gorgeous, gorgeous snake. Look at this little boy I've been growing up. I purchased a snake uh, last year, or actually earlier this year. Actually, I think it was last year. And the breeder was nice enough to throw this in for me. Uh, bought a bunch of stuff from him. This is a super nanny. Okay, so the nanny gene does all kinds of crazy stuff in terms of pattern changing. Almost looks a little hurricane-ish, right? And darkens it definitely. Adds a lot of gold. This gold is really vibrant. This is the super nanny too. So that's kind of cool. So everything I breed, this guy too will be a nanny. And that's great. So I don't have to play any guessing games with it. And this guy, you know, I've been just, I forgot about him almost. He's just been in the rack, he gets fed every week and he's put some really nice size in I think I'm gonna to try to breed him this year. I wasn't going to, I didn't know if he was big enough, but he looks like he, he's gonna go. Um, he's a little on the small side, but I find the ball pythons, as long as they got the age on them, at least 18 months, they'll breed. So I might, I'm trying to debate who to put him in with or what to put him in with. Really nice looking snake, however. And I'll be interested to see what I can produce. Another, there's so many genes in ball pythons, you can, you can get lost in them, you know, and sometimes I get sucked into getting too many of them, but this one kind of came to me. So, you know, sometimes there's divine providence. Maybe I'll produce something really special of it. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed all the snakes I showed you. And I hope, Amaya, you really love that male boa that I'm sending you out. I know you're going to get addicted to boas now. And <laughs> before we know it, you're going to be the one of the top boa breeders by the time you're 18. That's how it works. Uh, well, and then I'll be an old guy by then. And I'll have to just, uh, hopefully, I'll be like your Yoda. Ah, you know, impart all my wisdom to you. Anyway, <laughs> once again, I hope you guys are getting all your Christmas shopping done. My daughter's birthday was today, so, and my daughter's name is not Amaya, but it's uh, Aria, so pretty close. Aria's three years old today, so I want to say happy birthday, Aria. And she's got a lot of gifts to open, and we have a cake to blow out candles, so I got to get cracking, so to speak. You guys know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, hit the like button. We'll see you back tomorrow morning.